magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together as we enter into the house of the Lord. We sing praises, praises to our God. This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online, and we are exhorted by God to trust. We're going to need a lot of trust in through here. So we're going to start at Psalms 37. Psalms 37, starting at verse 1. We might read the whole thing, so... For those of you who don't like hearing God's word, skip. And for those of you who love God's word, please hear the whole thing and wait for the message as well. Thank you. All right. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart commit thy way unto the Lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be, but the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Hmm. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume. Into smoke they shall consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have seen I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. <laughs> I'm going to stop there right now. We'll see if the Lord moves me to continue reading. But what I want to share with you is God as the old folks, I'm saying old folks, right? 68 years old. But anyway, 
yeah, the, them old folks, <laughs> as the old folks used to say, he is due to trust. And one of the things I want to share with you is sometimes we put more trust in humans and our ideas and our methods and our way of getting over, our way of handling problems, whatever the case may be. We trust in ourselves because we've known me, myself, and I all of our lives. But we really don't know me, myself, and I as we'd like to. God knows us better than we do. He knows what we need. He knows what will fix our problems. He knows the timing, and he knows how long we need to wait on him to see results. He understands why we get frustrated, why we get impatient, why we get angry with him. He understands that. But what I want to share with you is when God says he wants us to trust in him, our behavior has to exemplify our trust. Our behavior has to be a pure expression of trusting him. Let me share this little quick story with you. I told a friend of mine years ago, this is for those of you who are struggling with either your needs getting met or answers to your particular prayer being answered or maybe you're in a quandary and you need a solution and God isn't moving fast enough. You can't see a way out no matter which way you look. And then we hear that war might be on the horizon. So that's not exciting, adding insult to injury. We already have our own problems, right? All right. What God did years ago was he gave me a dream that I was going to have someone give me an old car. And I was so excited to finally be off, you know, know that I was going to be independent as far as transportation goes. And within a month or two of that dream, I got a call from my friend, Pat. And she told me, God laid it on my heart to give you my car and buying a new one. And she, you know, she's so tender. She's making sure I won't be offended by the offer. I was like, I appreciate it. I knew something was coming. I just didn't know when, how, or where. So what happened? I got the car. Now, fast forward. I have another dream about maybe a year and a half after I was driving her car. And I dreamt that I was, I woke up in a town car. And that was the car the Lord had blessed me with at the beginning when I was 50, my first new car. I always drove hoopties. Listen to this. When I dropped the car, I told a friend of mine who was a born again Christian, I was going to have to clear my garage out to make room for the extra size. And I was going to have to sell the old car because I can only have one car in this community living in this house. You know, we couldn't park our car on the street. It has to be in the garage. So I'm praying, praying, waiting, praying. No sign. Going on two years. No sign. And then all of a sudden, I feel like it's time. So I talked to my niece about it. Just to show you how God works things out. She gets on Facebook on the marketplace, puts an ad. The very next day I get a call, man's ready to buy the car. I don't have another car. That's it. But God told me he was going to give me the town car. And I knew it wasn't the old one I had because it was a different license plate with, a, a zero, with an O inside of it. Oh, so I said, okay, mm, I'll just go on and sell the car. So I sold the car. My friend up here got on my case. Now, this is natural reasoning. There's nothing wrong with what she said. She just didn't know the faith I had in God because of how God, every time he gave me a dream about a car, I got one. So listen to this. She said, 
So how are you going to make room for the other car with the old car? And I said, well, I already sold it. And she said, you sold the car? And I said, yeah. She said, why? That doesn't make sense. Now you don't have a car. I said, yes, I do. I do. It's just not in my hands yet. She said, Pat, you don't have any form of transportation. You don't know how long it's going to be. I said, I know, but God reassured me. <laughs> like Lynette's message the other day. God reassured me. It wouldn't be long. And she was shaking her head like I was the biggest idiot on the planet. Three weeks later, I called her. And I said, guess what? And she said, what? I said, I got my town car. She was shocked. She was like, are you coming to church Sunday? I said, yeah. Because I went to that church Sunday so I could do our church on Saturday. So I pulled up. And when she saw the car, she was blown away. She said, Pat, I would never have ever sold a car not knowing that I had one in my hand. And I said, well, I don't go anywhere no more than once a month, so I didn't even miss the other car. Spends most of the month in the garage. I didn't need it. Sure enough, this car was there. Now, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to say how I got it, but our home church knows how I got that car which was a miracle. All I had to do was pay for the tags and the registration. Moving right along. When you are waiting on God to do something, I was telling Rashad the other day, make sure that you act on what you believe. Make room for your blessing. Make room. If you see the clouds coming like Jesus des described, you know, we see the clouds coming and we can discern the weather, but we can't discern the signs of the times. Well, there are times when God's ready to bless you. There are times God is ready to move you to another level. And in order for you to get in position for that level, you must equip yourself. You must prepare. Things need to be moved. Things need to be done. Items need to be cleared out. Things need to be cleaned. You need to learn something. You need to equip yourself and prepare for the blessing. You also need to equip yourself and prepare for hard times when you see the writing on the wall. Either way, you must always be in a position of preparation, prayerful preparation, so that if the crap hits the fan, you got all the water and the food you need, you got candles, you got different ways to heat yourself and keep yourself taken care of. If your blessing is on the way, you're ready for it because you prepared. Either way, you prepare. A lot of times there's an old saying that says, believe for the best, but prepare for the worst. This is my saying. Pat's two cents on that. Prepare for the best and prepare for the worst. And just believe God. Either way, he's going to take care of you. You taking care of his business. You're living in him. You're abiding in the secret place of the Most High. Under the shadow of the Almighty. You have a relationship with him. He's not a deadbeat dead. He's going to take care of his own. So what you do is you ask for instruction. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. But you must trust his word. You must trust him. If I tell Pat, I'm going to come over in two hours, and I'm bringing a big old bucket of ice cream for the whole family and some chips and soda, 
get out the paper plates and the cups because we're going to have a party. And she says, what time? And, I, and we agree on a time. She says, good, come over at 5 o'clock. I said, okay, I'll leave here at quarter to four to make sure I get there at five. Now, is she now she may not have had ice cream for six months. You can look at me and tell I've had ice cream recently, but if you look at her, she looks like she never eats ice cream. I wish I was small like that. But anyway, so what happens is. Here she's waiting for me to come with the ice cream and the chips. She's got her grandkids all excited and her sons and her son's uh, uh, wife and everybody's over there getting excited because we're going to have fun. Bringing the Scrabble, the, the, the Monopoly, the cards, everything we're going to bring and have a good time together. Now, is she going to spend the whole day saying, Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, make this happen, Lord. You got to make it happen, Lord. Make Pat get the ice cream. Make her get here and make her bring everything she said she was going to bring, Lord. Make it happen, Lord. Make it happen. Make it happen. Or is she going to be in the kitchen busy pulling out the, the paper plates and the plastic cups and making sure everything's ready so when I get there, they're ready to sit down and chow down. What is she going to be doing? What would you be doing? You look at God's precious promises in the Bible. Nine times out of ten, you look at his word, you believe it, you're convinced, you praise God for his promises. But then you run into a buzzsaw and the day throws you a monkey wrench. Oh no! What do I do? Jesus, help me. Now, all of a sudden, the sirens are going, woo, 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 woo. and the bells are ringing, and the, and the gongs are banging, and, 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 and you're pulling your hair out at the roots, and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Lord, Lord, you got to do something. Oh, God, 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 help me. Oh, Father, where are you Lord you are you gonna answer me or are you gonna leave me stranded what are you gonna do but you just read his word you've been reading this word not only all week you've been reading this word all month matter of fact you've been reading his word for about 10 20 years however long you've been walking with the Lord you you think you're convinced but why is it Every time the monkey wrench rears its ugly head, you're thrown into panic mode. Or you look up at God and you think, oh, you don't love me. You ain't going to help me. How many of you do that? You are so busy comparing God to human beings. God is not a man that he should lie, y'all. I think y'all owe him an apology. We all do. <laughs> but listen to what I'm saying. Do you really trust him? Do you really believe in his word? Do you really believe in his love? He died on the cross, baby. At the hands of the very people he created with his hands. Like Jesus said, if I wanted to, I could call 10,000 angels. Whoop, it would be over. But he kept himself on that cross for the sake of our redemption, our forgiveness, mercy towards us, for us to have an abundant life with him, which means we would be under his care, under his tutelage, getting wisdom, inner strength, inner healing, provision, protection, instruction, love, satisfaction. Everything we need is in him. But as soon as life throws that monkey wrench, as soon as Satan throws you a curveball, you sit on the ground 
part your legs, pee on yourself, and wallow in that pity. Why? Have you asked yourself why? You go to God, you go to the Word, you hear God's people, you hear the Word, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. Yes, 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 you are blessed, don't be stressed, God is on your side, God is for you, not against you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. God shall provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. Blah, 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 blah. Straight from the word. And what do you do? You got the sirens going. You're calling for the paramedics. You're calling for the fire department. You're calling for the rescue and the helicopter. You're calling for ABC News to come and film it because you want the world to know. You're in a crisis. You want everybody, you call people all wee hours of the morning, noon, and night because you got an issue. And you just ain't sure God's going to come through. Can we please stop insulting God with our fears? Can we please stop shortchanging him and his abilities by what we see people do and not do? Stop comparing him to the deadbeat dad or the washed out mom. Stop comparing him to your two-faced friends. Stop comparing him to your fair weather friends. Stop comparing him to that. If God says it, baby, I don't have to say, I believe it and that settles it. No, if God says it, that settles it. Period. God is, God, sometimes I wish I could supernaturally just paint a picture in midair and say, now that's God. You finally believe now. But unfortunately, we have to live through life. And when you wonder why bad things happen to good people, it's part of the process of getting to know God. Because if you don't have a flat tire, you don't ever learn how to use the tire iron and the mechanism, the, the thing that hoists up the car so that you can change the tire. If you never run out of gas, you don't remember or you are not as mindful of keeping the gas tank above a certain level. See, when you, the more you learn your limits, the more you learn the limits placed on life itself, it's, it causes you to reach out to the limitless God, the God of the impossible. He can do all things for us if we believe. But see, the problem with us, and some of us are baby Christians, some of us are junior Christians, some of us are half-wit Christians, and some of us are senior veteran Christians. And we all have the issues of doubting God. I think almost every one of us should have Thomas as a middle name. Remember doubting Thomas? I won't believe it until I see the hole in your side and the, and the scars in your hand. And I got to see it. That's the problem. When you open your refrigerator to get your food, when you wake up in the morning, let me ask you this. When you wake up in the morning and you decide to start your day off with prayer, do you get in front of that refrigerator and bow to it and say, Refrigerator, I pray 
way that you preserve my food. I'm hungry. I need something to eat. Have food in there for me. Uh, no. No, you don't do that. Because you know your refrigerator works. Day after day, year after year, decade, maybe not after decade. But anyway, you get my point. When you open the refrigerator, you expect the light to come on and the food to be cold. My question to you is why do you not have that level of expectation for God to come through for you? Why not? What's lacking? What's happening in here that causes your faith to always be at a strain? To always be on edge. You feel like every day of your life you're living on edge. Why is that? Why is it? See what we don't deal with. We deal with the problem. We deal with how we feel about the problem. But what we don't deal with is what is jacked up, tore up from the flow up, scarred up. Cut up inside of our hearts, our psyches, our, our spirits that causes us to have these overblown reactions to some of the ordinary, normal problems that happen almost on a daily basis. Why is it everything such a big deal? Why is it everything is a matter of life or death? Why is it one minute you love God and the next minute you hate him. One minute you believe God, the next minute you don't care about me. You don't believe he cares about you. You don't, you, 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 I mean, come on. God ain't got time to be bothered with a nobody like me. And you go into this rabbit hole of despair based on your reaction. You know what the problem is? I'm going to tell you right now. You need inner healing because somewhere in your life, you have been hurt, disappointed, disillusioned, screwed over so many times that you carry the scars all over you. Your scars show more than the clothes you wear because of your reactions to life. So a good question to live with, with God, instead of pointing the finger and getting ticked off at him. Take a little time to sit down and say, Lord, why does that bother me so much? Why do I fly off the handle? What's wrong with me? Why do I have a problem believing you? Why is it I panic? All the time. What makes me go into these blind rages where I'm having adult temper tantrums when I get angry? What is wrong with me? Not what's wrong with him. Not what's wrong with her. Not what's wrong with them. What's wrong with me? Hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of the things my husband made me aware of years ago. And I didn't recognize it till he brought it to my attention. And I said, wow, he's really been watching me. I like that. I was getting real grumpy on this particular day. Everything, traffic, drivers, everything was getting on my nerves. And Milton was listening to me as we were trying to get somewhere. And I'm fussing at everything that has a wheel. I'm fussing at everything made of metal. I'm fussing at everybody sitting behind the wheel. I'm fussing at the traffic lights. I'm fussing at the sidewalk. I'm fussing. And Milton looked over and he said, baby. And I said, yeah. Are you worried about the finances? Wow, 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 wow. What did he say that for? Oh, 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 oh my goodness. It was like somebody took a brick and popped me in the face with everything written across it. This is your problem. 
And it was like an instant revelation. And I said, oh my God. Because when I would get angry, I would explain to him, this is not about you. I'm upset about this or I'm upset about that. We pray about it. Well, after a while, he started picking up my pattern. And when he said it, I pulled the car. I found somewhere to park that car. And I let the tears roll, y'all. And I said, Milton, thank you for bringing that to my attention. That's exactly what my problem is. We couldn't pay the house payment. I was afraid I was going to be late. Afraid. I was one of those doubting Thomases. I was afraid that I was not going to have the money for the lease, the monthly lease that following Tuesday because it was a, it was a meek weekend. And I only had two more days to make up that money. And my overhead, my lease was $2,300 a month for the business. We ain't even getting to the home, the home bills. All right. Milton's money took care of all the bills and all the food. But then there was the mortgage. So we're looking at all of that. And I'm like, ah! I was pulling my hair out by the root. And I'm telling you. I cried my eyes out and I asked God to help me, help my unbelief, help me trust him. And do you know, the Lord blessed, that Saturday, I ended up making $1,200 in one day and was able to pay Thelma $150 for working seven hours with me. And I was still able to pay my rent that Monday. Mm -hmm. So, those things happen in life to teach us to step back, put the car in park, and reassess what are we going through and why. And once I realized I was fearful and worried about not being able to pay the bills on time, because I'm a stickler about paying my bills on time. When I was worried about that, it made me grumpy at everything that was going on. Fouled up my attitude, y'all. Mm -hmm. I was thanking from the flow up. And Milton, thank God, understood what was going on. And he took me by the hands. And we just sat there, put the car in park, and we prayed together. We prayed. That's what I appreciate about God. I had a husband that had insight. And he was a praying man. We prayed. He prayed for me as I boohoo. And when he got through praying for me, I asked the Lord to forgive me for not trusting him. There are times when we don't know why we blow off like we do. But so many times it's because we have trust issues. We just don't trust. It's hard. Because we've been wounded. We've been stabbed in the back. You can't judge the future traffic on that road by what happened in the rearview mirror. Or else you keep focusing in that rearview mirror so long you will crash into something that you didn't even know was in front of you because you're not looking where you're going. You're looking at where you came from. And that's where your focus is. And that's why life is so hard. Why situations hurt so bad. Why you go into a blind rage. Why you go into a mindless panic. Because of the rear view mirror. Change your focus. Confess to God what your struggles are. The Bible says pour your heart out to him. He already knows you have need before you even open your mouth. But it, do, it gives us a good gully washing to get that stuff up and out. Then God can replace all that mess and turmoil with his peace. Then it's much easier to trust God once you got the clutter out the way. 
once you move the rear view mirror away from your focal point. Trust God. He is due to trust. This old one is telling you that. He's due to trust. He's not shaky, flaky. Mm -mm, no. He's true to form. He's dependable. He's reliable. If he says it, that settles it. Amen. Trust in God. <laughs> There's a song that says, wait, wait, wait on the Lord. We must wait. Wait on the Lord. We must learn our lessons well. In his timing, he will tell us what to do, where to go, what to say. Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. In his timing. Ask God to settle our nerves and make us wait on his timing. Ask God to remind us that all things work together for good. Even the bad things, even the setbacks, even the late appointments, even the missed appointments, even the flat tire. All things work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. All we have to do, y'all, is trust. There's another song that says, all things work for our good. Though sometimes we can't see how they could. Struggles that break our hearts in two sometimes blind us to the truth. But our Father knows what's best for us. His ways are not our own. So when your pathway grows dim and you just can't see him, remember, you're never alone. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand and you can't see his plan and you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone is faithful and true. He alone knows what is best for you. Amen. Trust his heart. God bless you. I'm done.